We all know about space deniers. Out of them all, I'm openly challenging a few of them. Dell, he's on Behind the Imaginary Curve. Nathan Oakley, Huey, and Arwen of the debate to explain the night-day cycle of their plane. After listening to some of their streams, I noticed that they have skipped fully talking about this fact. I've heard them try to explain it a few times, but their explanation was easily debunked. If you want to see the debunk, it's on Professor Dave Explains channel. There's three videos. They come up if you search them. So it's a pretty simple concept that you must explain these basic things before moving on to complain about Coriolis like they do or really anything else. Because let's say they end up making some groundbreaking discovery on Coriolis. They haven't, but humor me here. Even if they did, they still would have to reckon with this simple concept or they would just be wasting their time, honestly. So what is my challenge? Well, let me explain it, but I'll also show you here using this universe simulator. If they can't give a model that explains just these two phenomena, seasons and night and day cycle, of course, I'm just asking for night and day cycle, then it's over at that point. That was from Professor Dave in his video, and it was awesome. The globe model obviously shows why we see half the planet in the day and the other half in the night. The line separating the night and day is called the Terminator line. So to sum up my challenge, it's simple. Describe, either in video form or typed out, how this could work on their flat plane. I've heard people say that the plane is proven. There should be no problem here, right? Oakley said that this week many times. QE did too. I think Dell did too. So describe half the plane being in night and the other half in day at any given time. Accurate, of course, to what we see. So we can compare it to like the countries on the globe. Oops, I mean the plane. Uh, and accurately show which are in night and day at any given time. Also show where the sun would be and where the moon would be and do it to the same accuracy as the globe model. Draw out a diagram or show it in video form to accompany this description and then submit it to the greater debunking, flurfing community so that others can review it and fact check it with observations. Then once we, the debunkers, are done, we will submit our findings back to them to either confirm what they have shown or to give them where it doesn't add up. So I'm going to be real here for a minute. Instead of laying any traps for Dell, Arwen, Oakley, or q and &E, I'm going uh, to go ahead and explain how they can't ignore this without fully showing their deceptiveness. Let me explain. See, the Flurf debate team just went on an epic rant in a video called Master Science Presentation on the Quantum Eraser channel. Quantum Eraser? Sorry, I have to add that in. That's how he says his name, just trying to be real and accurate here. In this video, they talk about how important the scientific method is for quite some length. I think he compares it to him being on the front line in a war. They know, as well as we do, that the most important part of the scientific method is, of course, peer review. It is the backbone of the entire process and does not function without it. Without other people fact-checking, testing, observing, and debunking, or confirming our findings, a theory or statement is just not scientific or even slightly valid. This is something that is not stressed in their master science presentation, so I thought I'd be nice and correct for them with my open challenge here. Now I know it's very likely they won't respond, so if they don't, hopefully some other channels will be up to the challenge. Something else happened during the master science presentation and in the stream after on Nathan Oakley's channel. Oakley complained on for an extended amount of time about how people don't take flurfs seriously or their opinions. Sleeping Warrior then chimed in himself and went on one of his most upset rants I've ever heard him uh, do. And yes, I think he was crying during it. 
The entire thing was centered around a paper that he wrote recently. I'll sum this up pretty quick. He said that the school system isn't teaching alternative thought in class and that it is against some law or something. He's dead wrong, of course. It all ends somewhere around here. The schools should have to teach other theories than an evolution and space globe because other people out there think this is wrong and to deprive people from that representation is wrong. He doesn't really get the fact that if he wanted any other type of thought process taught, he would need to prove it and submit it for peer review and have people respond and go through the scientific process to get any other point represented. Now, why do I bring this up? Well, for two reasons. Because if these guys really thought their Earth was a plane, they would have compiled this challenge a very long time ago. 100%, I believe, they ignore these basic truths because they know that they are wrong about these things. And skipping ahead to the Coriolis or other convoluted arguments allows them to have more content and also confuse their listeners enough to keep them listening and donating. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Nathan will respond. The other reason I brought up Sleeping Warrior's paper, though, well, I was going to add his name to this challenge, but after I read his essay, I realized that he has the mentality of a six-year-old, writes like one, too, and this is probably why he acts like one. I'm not trying to be mean to the guy, but if you think I'm exaggerating, read his thesis. <laughs> All right, so I can't wait to see their polite response and get to work debunking it. Now, I want to talk about exposure for a second, magnification, and some other values inside of my simulator. Let me, let me do, bring it up really fast. Let me make it bigger. You know that I surf the internet and I hear all these arguments from space deniers and flurfs and all these people, so I've always wanted to show them this. Now, when you go into a universe simulator, an algorithm, uh, a, a, a modeling tool that shows us our universe, you, you notice that the way that light works can show you many different things. Like you're staring at a dark night right now. You can barely see one star right here. What is it? Altair. Okay. Gliese 768. White sub, uh, subgiant. Well, that's not the only star in the sky. But it also doesn't mean that there's nothing else in the sky or that, you know, if we weren't looking through a simulation right now and we were actually taking this picture, it wouldn't mean the picture was fake or it was CGI. Let me show you what I mean, because every one of these universe simulators let you increase the exposure, the, the amount of light that you pick up, and it lets you increase magnification. If I click that instead of zoom in and if I really push my computer to the limit, I can show you all the stars out in the night sky. Now, I bring this up, of course, because flurfs and science deniers constantly talk about how certain pictures are fake because they don't see the amount of stars they think they should see, or they see no stars at all. All that has to do with the lens you're using, the uh, other settings in your camera or in your... Um, you know, whatever you're using to take the picture and see this, like if I look at the sun, it's blinding, isn't it? Doesn't have to be. We can actually look at the size of the sun from over here, and I'm very close to the earth right now, and we can see it ourselves this way. Get me? I can also switch between different modes of viewing the light, as you see here. You notice how you can see a lot here and then a lot of it kind of dims out. Well, look what happens when we go to the sun. Well, now we can actually see it and we can see some of the light that's around it. Let's go ahead and turn down the exposure. Now we can fly right into the thing and it's not going to blind us. But what happens if we reset our exposure and our magnification or maybe set to a different kind of light? You see what I'm saying? Now, if we were to get a probe close to the sun and take a picture, people might say it's fake because there's no stars behind it, but I could make the stars come up behind it. What's the problem? 
Well, I gotta set it on manual first. What's the problem with that? The sun's gonna blind us. Doesn't mean it's fake. Doesn't mean the picture's not real. And if I do try to uh, push the settings, I'm of course going to break my algorithm. And I don't wanna do that now, do I? So let's go ahead and get out of there. And let me do one more thing to show you how extreme this is. You could take a picture and see all the stars out. Let's get to a darker part of the sky. All the stars out in the sky. And what's cool about this simulator, I could click on one of them and go there. I'll do it in just a second. But if we could see what it really looks like with all the points of light shining and capture the light from these things, as you see right now, all we would see is a massive wall of light. But let's do something cool. Let's fly out here to Orion. We're getting to a point in our technology where let me back up I still have my settings warped out sorry I'll fix it for the next video but we could actually let's say we were gonna fly in and instead of going towards this little guy let's uh, go right here now see that tiny little star right there might even be a planet I'm gonna try to get up really close to it and I want you to see a little bit of perspective, a little bit of the incredible size of objects in the, in the sky, in the night sky. Now, once we got close, look at this. Turns out, not a star at all. These are planets. It's orbiting this uh, star system right here in Orion. And look at how many of them there are. Well, look what happens if we turn down our magnification and our magnitude uh oh i lost it we can actually start to see a little bit of it now i could go ahead and find it and track it around and all that i'm not going to but i hope i make a point those people out there that deny science deny space and deny the things we see those of you that think that all of this stuff is fake because of these dumb reasons these youtubers put out like nathan oakley dell arwin and all these other guys maybe they're just ignorant to a lot of what's going on maybe if you open your mind a little bit get out there and learn some stuff and actually push your push yourself and challenge the way you think maybe you'd start to see something really really amazing and to stress my point let's just speed up time for a second